Hi, thank you for joining me. I wanted to talk about Greg Locke. He's very much in the news, especially here in Western Kentucky and the, the Nashville area of Tennessee. He's been stirring up a lot of controversy here in our local communities over his latest shot at getting the, the notoriety that he seeks. I don't know if you remember Greg Locke, but he, he, he became Facebook famous in 2016 uh, with a video ranting and railing against the uh, inclusive target bathroom policy. Shortly after that, he hitched his wagon to Donald Trump and Donald Trump was very good business for him. He attracted all of those uh, Q conspiracy um, evangelicals to his um, to his tent and you know also to his attention. Um, very very much into conspiracy theories and um, terrible things about Democrats. I'm not going to go into all of them, but I'm sure you've heard all of the dog whistles. Um, he recently said that autistic children are autistic because um, they're being influenced by demons, um, which sh a lot of things should go without saying in this, you know, in the age that we're in, but, um, but I'm not going to go without saying it. There's nothing wrong with autistic people, autistic children. They're just wired a little bit differently than we are. And just because we, uh, we we're so used to conforming to the constraints that the society expects of us, um, it's our inability to be flexible with people who don't or can't. So they're wired a little bit differently, but they're beautiful. Um, they, they look at the world differently. They perceive things differently than we do. That is not a curse. It's not a demonic influence. So he got a lot of pushback on that, even from Christians who, um, who have autistic people in their family, people that they love. His response to the pushback he got was to accuse everyone that was upset with him of being influenced by demons. Now, uh, he's been doing book burnings. He has been um, doing these huge fires where people are throwing their Harry Potter books, um, tarot cards, dream catchers, sage, um, which might make the, the area around the fire smell awfully good, but um, more specifically, he's going after people. And it's important to know when he says, um, he, there's a po he's got a, a video on YouTube, and I'll link to it below. The caption underneath the video says, witches, warlocks, masons, you're going to burn. Or something very close to that. I think it says you're going to burn. He's talking about people, new age practitioners, people that use crystals and tarot cards and astrology. They're all being influenced by demons. And this is what he says. And he wants all of that stuff to be brought to his bonfire. The problem with that is here in the South, New Age practitioners and Wiccans are a marginalized group of people. Um, just because there's so much hate rhetoric that goes on normally here from other Christian from Christians. And so it's very difficult to make someone like Pastor Locke understand that he is attacking um, not only an idea, 
but he's 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 endangering people and threats against new age practitioners have already begun here at the end of the day what he's doing is he is attempting to persecute people with other faiths other religious beliefs than him he's not just attacking ideas he's demonizing people that have nothing to do with demons they're just practicing their own religion quietly because they're already afraid. And that's really why I'm going to do a couple of videos um, highlighting him because I think it's really important. Um, I don't have many followers on this page, but I think it's important for people to know what's going on in these small marginalized communities where his rhetoric is making people unsafe. And whenever someone tries to push back and say, don't do that, he demonizes them too. So we're going to watch this together. I haven't seen it. Um, I'm not sure what he's going to say, but, but let's react to it together. And I will stop and go as um, as I feel a comment coming on. This is a lovely, um, these are some lovely mu local musicians uh, that he has playing here. Blood of Jesus Christ. And this is almost over. Here we go. Hallelujah. Oh, let me Amen. stop there. I want to tell you, this woman here is his wife. She hasn't been his wife for very long. He was married to uh, his wife, Melissa, for 21 years. Um, they had four children. And this woman here, her name's Ty, she was Melissa's best friend. Ladies, can I hear from you? He fell in love with Melissa. He gave Melissa a position in the church as a preacher who preaches that divorce is wrong. Pastor Locke here, who is a self-appointed pastor? I'm a minister. I had to get appointed by, by um, an organization. He just decided that he was going to anoint himself a min minister and start his own church. So that's what that is. But he does preach against He's very legalistic, Pharisee. He he reads the words from the Bible very literally. He has no um, no education or historical um, knowledge of the times that the Bible was written in and what what the uh, what the writers were um, were referencing when they wrote the words that they wrote. So he he doesn't. Um, there's no complexity. He picks Bible um, Bible verses, not even um, not even chapters. So I'm getting off track. So this woman here, they fell in love, and he started a campaign to get rid of his wife Melissa. He abused her. Um, there are text messages that he he just speaks horribly to her. Um, he was inundating her with just hate. I just want you to leave. I want to get rid of you. Um, but he had the optics of being a pastor who was against divorce. So he thought that, that if he could uh, if he could drive her away, <clears throat> then he could say that she left him. And at one point he told her that he didn't care if she took all the pills in the house and died. He just wanted her out of his life and she confronted her friend Ty here too and and Ty said well you know if you died wouldn't you want your best friend to make your husband happy it was very disgusting the whole thing was very disgusting and Melissa did wind up fleeing to a, a woman's shelter um, over the over the state line into Georgia and she was there for quite a while through their whole family, 
and all the four children into an uproar. And um, she, Melissa did file for divorce, but then she pulled out. She said, you know what? The Bible is against this, and I, I want to reconcile. I just want to be back with you. And so he filed for divorce, and he was married like not even a week after the divorce was final. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of a, a back story. Amen, amen, amen. On that, on be seated for a few moments tonight. The book of Mark is where we take our text, where we finished last week. This is week three of deliverance from demons. But uh, we've been about five messages in our deliverance series, which was inadvertently and accidentally, maybe not so much, a series that it turned into. And we will be in this for a while because it seems like everywhere I look in the Bible, I see deliverance and I see the fact that Jesus came to deliver his people. He's called the deliverer. I just realized yesterday, after 30 years of preaching the gospel, that there is a reason that many of the Psalms are called songs of deliverance because God uses worship, amen, because it stirs up the enemy. And I remind you, the only thing that soothed the evil spirit from the Lord that came upon King Saul in 1 Samuel was when David would play music on the harp. The Bible's full of deliverance. The Bible says I was studying today earlier in the office before some of these things began to manifest themselves in the Old Testament. It, uh, it uses a very interesting word to talk about the spirits that the people worshiped. And it says that the people sacrificed their children under the spirits, these Old Testament gods. Okay. The Old Testament gods were not demons. Again, if you don't understand the context of when the Bible was written, or the, the there was no Bible that was written. There were a bunch of books that were written, and some of them were picked out and canonized into what we uh, know today. Some denominations have more books, some have less. It just really all depends. But if you're a new Christian, and these, these books were all written after um, the death of Jesus, if it even occurred, um, so much of the Bible is, <clears throat> it's really the oral, uh, the oral history of a people. And so whoever wrote um, what he's referring to now, there was a specific reason that that he wrote that. So we are um, we are trying to convert pagans into Christianity. So we're going to say that um, they're worshiping. I don't even believe the word demon was used back then, but unclean spirits, however they refer to it. And so, so those, those old deities are going to be uh, demonized, of course. That were worshipped other than Jehovah God were nothing more than demon manifestations. Nothing more than that. It's all through the Bible. And so, you know, we, we get this, this spooky idea for Another thing that may be all through the Bible, but the people that he's demonizing currently are not Christians. They're, they're Wiccans. They're New Age practitioners who have all different kinds of beliefs. None of those um, infer a belief in, in, um, in Satan or, the, or demons. And... If you actually know your Bible, Satan was not in the Bible what Mr. Locke is now referring to. Um, and that's it, the context is is really important from exorcist movies that all this stuff is made up and it's just something that we're just, you know, we're just now coming into this. We're not just now coming into this. The Lord's been doing this for a long time. Our church is just kept it keeping up and catching up to the power of the gospel because as we look the first week, the second week, tonight, and we're not even going to get all the way probably through the book of Mark, we've already dealt with the fact that at least a third of everything Jesus did in his ministry dealt with casting out evil spirits. You recognize that fact? That's a lot. Jesus cast out spirits. Get this. It's a bold statement. I can prove it to you from the Bible. 
Jesus cast out devils in the. Okay. I can prove it to you from the Bible. I'll leave it up to you to, um, to figure out what's wrong with that statement. New Testament. More than he did anything else in his ministry. No. No. No, 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 no. No. Pastor Locke. And you seem to need to see demons everywhere. I'm not sure if you're projecting. But the love of Christ is a central element of Christians, as well as the Messianic um, Jewish beliefs and theology. It's the love of Christ. It's not demons. You might need demons in your life. You might you might um, utilize the the the, the idea. Uh, in the ideology of demons, because it's benefiting you. It's getting you attention. I know he can't hear me, but it's the love of Christ. And we sit around like a bumper log, like, well, you know, I just don't know if it's yeah, that important. Like it was log. more than anything else he did. It was more than feeding multitudes. It was more than just simply healing people, which many times was the manifested work oh of casting God. out the evil spirit that was causing them to be sick to begin with. Okay. Jesus dealt with the root See, of during biblical times, here this was thousands of years ago. There were no, there were no diagnostics. There were no doctors. People that were deaf, people that were um, were blind, people that had all kinds of physical ailments. Because physical ailments are nothing new. It th that's what it was considered to be. It was perception. Not reality, Mr. Law. The issue, not just the fruit of the issue. And the problem is the American church likes to talk about fruit but never get down to the root. And this is root deep preaching is what we're doing. We're going all the way back to the root of why you think the way you think, why you're angry, why you're mad, why your marriage is falling apart, why you can't get off pills, why you can't sleep at night. This is so irresponsible. And this is why I encourage people, if you are called to be a pastor, if you're called to be a minister, it's important for you to know the material that you are going to instruct from. Because what he's telling people is that, you know, if you have insomnia, if you have marriage problems, if you, um, if there's, if you have physical ailments, it's because of demons. This is spiritual abuse. And it's unconscionable to me. Huh? That's what we're getting to. We get into the spirit of the matter. Because that's the important thing. And so we won't get even all the way through all of these contexts tonight. But I've been showing you week after week after week. We went all the way through Matthew. We went halfway through Mark. We'll try to finish as much as we can in Mark. Then you got Luke. Then you got John. Then you got Acts. Then you have the Pauline epistles. You have all of these books that continually just in the New Testament talk about the influence. Here's the problem. And you don't know it, Mr. Locke, because you're biblically uneducated. Those those um, books that you just referred refer to each other. You are being extremely dishonest when you're talking about how many times demons are mentioned in the Bible when, when you don't know or you just don't care that each book repeats the same event. So you're just counting the word demon because you need to count the word demon because you're looking for one third or whatever. Extremely, extremely uneducated. And the power it of demons. Me. And the American church it wants to hear nothing of it. There's a reason for that. Here's what we want to do. Well, you know, if you serve There's Jesus, malarkey. you'll be healthy, wealthy, and wise, and you'll drive a fancy car and live in a big house. Mr. Locke drives a fancy car. As a matter of fact, there's $200,000 missing from his church, and one of his underpastors got um, let go or disappeared quietly. But that was not um, before he bought uh, Mr. Locke and himself new cars from the local Audi dealer. The prosperity gospel is no gospel. It is no gospel. You're prospering. It's a powerless, weak, fake imitation of the gospel. That you use. And these bunch of slimy demons. 
So you want to talk about slimy? Okay, get me going. I watched a video of him shaming his con uh, congregation, shaming them and threatening them with the curse of God if they did not give him enough tithings. In another one, he suggested that if you, uh, if you need money for gas or you need to tithe, you need to uh, tithe because your tithing will, uh, will bless you. And guess what that is, Greg Locke? That's prosperity ideology. That's what you're talking about. And you're a hypocrite. Women possess crooks like Kenneth Copeland ought to be exposed for who they are. <laughs> okay. That's the only preacher name I'll name tonight. Whet your appetite. But I'm telling you, these preachers won't expose what needs to be exposed. They want to keep people in bondage. Doctors keep people sick because there's money in it. Preachers keep people weak and emotionally disconnected because there's money in it. Well, guess what? Okay. Pastor Locke there. Oh, Skippy. That's what he likes to call everyone. He's anti-mask, so you cannot go under his tent to worship if you have a mask on. You are not allowed. You are not welcome. You are not welcome to spend uh, a day in communion with other people and worship Jesus unless you do it on Greg Locke's terms. He's very much anti-vaccine, which he preaches. Many, many of his congregation have gotten sick because of that ideology. And one of them died. And so his, his theology and his ideology is bankrupt. He's never responsible for his own actions. I don't want your money. You can put it in the bag, burn it out there with the rest of that stuff tonight. Money means jack sprat to me. He was just shaming. He was just shaming his congregation. He used Malachi to say, God will curse you if you don't tithe. But guess what? Because people don't read their Bible. And he, he picked out a verse. He cherry picked a verse out. Malachi 8. I can't remember the number, um, but it said God will curse you. But guess what? It wasn't God. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't talking to the congregation. It was talking about the greedy temple priests. It was talking about Greg Locke, and he used verses that were meant for church priests to shame his congregation, manipulation. I'm the most non-connected person to money on the planet. Don't need it. Don't want it. Don't care. God takes care of my needs. Oh, that was a weird thing. Somebody says, well, I know I read Google, and Google said you're worth $130 million. Google says men can get pregnant, so get over yourself. Mark chapter 6, verse 6. He marveled because of their unbelief and went round about the villages teaching. Yeah, say teaching. Now watch this. And he called unto him his twelve. And begin to send them forth two by two and gave them power over unclean spirits. So not only did Jesus administer authority. Unclean spirits, again, context of the time this was written, were people that had epilepsy, people that had other infirmities. Like I said, blind, deaf, mute. These, these, were, all, these were all thought to be. Uh, unclean spirits, it's because they were unevolved, uneducated, unenlightened people who thought that thunder and lightning was punishment or that, you know, God was mad. Authority, he gave authority to his disciples. And then later, as we'll see, gave it to us. But we're afraid to walk in it. Because we're more concerned about how the carpet looks than we are people getting delivered. 
We're more concerned how the, how the glitz and the glamour and the glitter looks on the YouTube video than we are about people that are falling down under the power of an evil influence that need to be delivered in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible said they tore them and they were loud. Demons are not dignified. So here's the deal. Do you know why you've never really, some of you, not just not heard about this, but have not been under some of the intense, spiritual, accursed attacks that you've been under? And some of you grew up in church your whole life and never really had to deal with spiritual warfare. You know why? Same reason for me. Here it is. Because um, you're, um, you're creating a huge issue to get publicity and... We, one would think that most churches, if you're Christian, will focus on the, the message of um, Jesus. I know a lot of churches around here don't. Um, they're, you know, they're, um, they claim to be persecuted, although they're the ones that are against anyone else other than them having any kind of religious freedom at all. But that, that is the idea. And there are many churches in the United States and granted in the world that do focus on the message of Jesus. And it ain't demons, Skippy. It is because, because it was it never, never exposed. exposed. It was it's never a threat right. to the devil to begin with. The devil loves the American church. Our songs don't scare him. Our worship don't scare him. Our giving don't scare him. Our little mealy mouth, weak kneed, skinny jean preaching don't scared the devil. I mean, he sits on a pew. He knows the Bible better than all of us combined to the 10th power. But it's when you start to rip back the cover of darkness and expose his kingdom and his minions for who and what they are, then all of a sudden. This is not biblical. There is no kingdom and minions. What? This is. People are like, oh my goodness, is this what spiritual warfare? Yeah, and we should have been facing it a long time ago, but we were no threat to the devil. But now we're a big threat to the devil. This guy has the ego the size of at least Texas. Um, he thinks that what he's doing here is, um, is life-changing to people. And... What he's doing is he's he's attempting to twist and manipulate the life and purpose of Jesus. And if you don't emulate, if you don't teach about the life and teachings of Jesus, how is it that you can call yourself a Christian? I don't understand. So just get ready. Oh, yeah, because ready. he gave his followers power over unclean spirits. Now, that means one of two things. Either we have authority in Jesus' name over devils or Jesus is a liar. There's no way around that. You cannot cut that, slice that, dice that any way else. We either have power over unclean spirits or the unclean spirits have power over Jesus because he's weak. You can't have it both ways. You can't have it both ways. All right, keep going. Chapter 7. I told you every Wednesday night, just a crash course. Just, just giving you some overview. Chapter 7, verse 25. For a certain woman whose daughter had an unclean spirit. That means a she demonic was influence. Heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Seraphidician by name. I'm sick of everybody thinking just because I preach the Bible, it makes you a piss poor parent. They opened up something in her house that gave the evil spirit the ability to influence this child in such a way that it destroyed the whole household. You can quote me on that because that's what the Bible said. The devil loves picking on children. But he's picked on the wrong ones in this house. I can promise you that right now. He's picked on the wrong ones in this house. Verse 22, notice the description, and oftentimes it, the spirit, hath cast him, the kid, into the fire. Trying to kill him. Trying to burn him. And into the waters, trying to drown him. He's like, Jesus, I'm in desperation. We can't even go cook s'mores in the backyard because the spirit tries to throw him in the fire. We can't even go on a canoeing trip because the spirit that's in him, the evil spirit, tries to drown him. 
you know what this this irks me because <clears throat> during the inquisitions and the witch hunts in Europe and the ones in the United States the Christians killed tens of thousands at least of local herbalists midwives and healers and they these the mostly women were tortured and then burned alive or hung because they were called evil and not the christians who tortured and murdered them. To destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. I wish the church in America believed that. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. I said that the other day with my wife in a room. I'm like, I believe it, but you got to help my unbelief because it's getting crazy. I, I believe, will. but help my unbelief. I'll, I'll get behind you 100% on that. I conveniently principled my, principled my way out of them and made them convenient to bear because there's so much truth there. That's a little bit hard to stomach. Oh, no. If he oh, considers no, truth, come. see, his his idea of truth and my idea of truth are not the same. I don't care what book he's reading. If you call everyone who disagrees with you a demon, there is something wrong with you. And with your perception of what you're reading, but with a lack of biblical understanding, in historical context, it doesn't surprise me. It just shocks me that he is unwilling to be corrected. He has lost so many congregants, so many parishioners are gone. And when they leave, they talk. They tell stories to the press about their experiences being parishioners under this man's um, authority, which he believes he has over them. If he believes that his current congregants are talking uh, unhappily about the choices that he's making, he will stand and shame them, call them uh, unclean spirits and Pharisees and uh, demons and um, he'll do this kind of casting out thing. The problem is, every time he gets up here on this pulpit, which is a couple times a week, he casts out all the demons. The fact that he has to do it every time he's on the, on the, the stage there um, doesn't ever make anybody stop and think, well, if he could cast out demons and he cast them all out last week, what, why are we doing this again? Why aren't we moving on to something that is worthwhile and something that lifts people up rather than causing already indoctrinated people to have even more fear? So now they're starting to threaten our spiritual communities that aren't bothering them. They're practicing their own religion in their own way, and it's not the same as, as Greg Locke's. Too far to come back now, turn back now on that. It said the spirit cried. Here's what we want. Well, you know, if we're going to cast out devils, then let's just pray that the spirit whispers in the invitation and nobody hears it. It ain't going to happen. The Bible said it tear him. Tear him. Now, look, a lot of times you've seen some strange stuff in church. I was wondering the other day, I was talking with somebody. I'm about to get sidetracked, but it's going to be so beautiful because it's about to minister to my spirit, whether it does yours or not. Oh, Jesus. No pun intended. You ever wonder why you had these great experiences in church and things would begin to happen? Now, sometimes weird stuff happens, and you can tell the difference. 
forced, oh. manipulated, man-made, motivational stuff just because cameras or whatever are around. But look, you, you ever notice that there's what? some people that, that say things what like this? Man, I went to a service, and I felt something on the inside, and I wanted to get right, and I raised my hands, and I had an experience, and I began to shake, or man, my heart began to beat. Here's what happens. Sometimes, most of the time, in the American church, we put on just a show that's good enough to irritate the evil spirits. Oh my God. Just enough to make somebody want something a little bit more. Just enough to get the shaking going. Just enough to get that jaw a little, a little shaking. Just enough to almost get some. And we irritate them. And then here's what we do. We shut it down and we go home. And they leave irritated. Mad. Stirred up. Angry. Maybe your congregation leaves mad and stirred up and angry, but it might have more to do with you and this insanity that you're preaching rather than these demons that you are talking about. It is not un, um, in, uncommon for any faith community. I, I don't care if you're talking about the, the Satanist church, which, by the way, is just around to burn people like you. They actually don't believe in Satan. They're, they're, they're here to burn Christians and to prove a point. You say you want religious freedom? We're going to give it to you. <laughs> and then we'll see how you like it. But from, from the Satanist church to the Christian church to the Wiccan um, religion to the, the all the different New Age practitioners... Anytime you get together with a group of like-minded people and you come together in unity, yes, of course you have you, you have emotional, spiritual breakthroughs. And that's a good thing. Most people don't leave angry from those kind of experiences. So I believe he has no um he has no ability uh to self-reflect. But if he if he had the ability to self reflect, he would maybe start to wonder why his congregation goes away angry. And the Bible says that the spirit tear him, and the spirit cried out. And everybody thinks this is supposed to be some comfortable subject whereby we all just sit in church and it's so easy to just say, you know what? That's what it says. But it's not what it meant. It's exactly what it meant. The... We'll follow. Well, here's the first one. In my name, they shall cast out devils. Bam! First one. Which was an evidence of the results of verse 15. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. How do you know the gospel is being preached? Devils come out in the name of Jesus is what the Bible says. It was the evidence. It was the fruit of dealing with the root. So he said, in my name. He's just they'll cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents. Now, which by the way, I am not opposed to, you know, if you're a Christian and you believe that this is the the true story of the life and times of of Jesus, you know, even if it's a condensed repetitive like each each book just kind of in in their own words they um they tell you exactly what the book before said but if if you believe that Jesus has the ability to um to heal people um i believe that if that makes you feel better then more power to you but again, he's not taking this into context when he's talking about these unclean spirits and what people thought they were historically in the context of the time that these books were written. Way is not a justifiable right for snake handling churches to act silly and tempt the Lord. That's not what it means. It's when things come against you. They won't withstand you. You'll be able to handle it. Remember, Paul did. Serpent bit him right on the hand, and he shook it off. 
into the fire. So I say to all the serpents that have latched on to us over the course of the last couple of days, we shake you off in the name of Jesus and we feel Okay. So he's shaken all of the all of the naysayers, all of the people that he's called demons who disagree with him. All of the people that say you're hurting our community, please stop this. I'm I'm assuming that that problem is now gone. Over. No more. Oh no. It's actually true. It's not happening. He's he's still under extreme pressure to stop this. So does that tell his congregation something? Maybe he doesn't have the power that he thinks he does because he's um his his Don Quixote illusions stabbing at windmills it's not working he's getting more negative press not less i'm just saying feel no harm <laughs> and if they shall drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them i find that interesting it's not like poison was on the menu you don't just walk around drinking poison, right? And if they shall drink any deadly thing, it won't kill. Why was he saying that? Because these guys were being threatened with death for preaching the gospel and laying their hands on sick folks and watching devils come out. And people wanted to kill them then. And guess what? They want to kill us now. So I go on record as saying this. I'm a happily married man. I love my kids. I love oh, my really? church. I ain't going to be suiciding myself no time soon. Oh, look at this. He has got such a per he's got such a persecution complex. He this is pathological. He thinks that what he's doing is so important that the world's gonna kill him. So when he's much a Freemason. Let me tell you this though, before he gets into the, the Freemason spiel. I know this is kind of my community, this in, in this Nashville. Uh, Western Kentucky area, um, New Age practitioners. Do you know who all of the fundamentalist Baptist, Baptist Christians come to when they think that they're being influenced by demons or when they want to clear their house or when they want to know what's happening with the future? They come to the pagan community. That's where they come. So Mr. Locke is trying to get rid of his, his congregations out from this stuff. Chasing devils come chasing me down. Y'all don't make me preach for another 45 minutes because I promise you I'll do it. Oh God, please don't. I beg you. I curse that whole system in the oh name God, of God. Please don't let him. Please don't. I ain't him. playing with them. Look, I can't even go to a restaurant now without stirring them up. It's honest God truth. You start preaching like you're not stirring up demons. You, I, I was gonna, I was gonna use a swear. You're not stirring up demons. You are hurting people, and they are upset, and they have a right to be upset, and they have a right to be upset because you're demonizing them. These are your neighbors, your community, your city. You're demonizing people. You're calling them demons. They have every right to be upset. Sure. This and I mean it irritates the devil so bad. We walk up to a restaurant the other day with a whole bunch of folks. You have they practically threw the food at me. They're so mad they had to wait on me. We just got this thing now where people in our church just walk into a room and stir devils up. Keep on stirring. So he's equating devils with people that he's pissed off. And this is this is a bankrupt ideology. It means I'm right, you're a demon, and therefore you're not human, you deserve no mercy. He doesn't understand that in Africa, in the Pacific, in South America, 
people are still killed as witches by their Christian communities, and especially in Africa, from the interference of the far-right Christians from the United States who go over there and help them um, fashion their kill the gays bills. But in the Republic of Cong Congo, <clears throat> They've got between 25 and 50,000 orphaned children running around the city who have been abandoned because their parents have been led to believe that they were demon-possessed. So these children are just cast off. This is what this ideology does. And he is so backwards that he doesn't know what's going on in the world. I can't stop pointing my finger. He doesn't know what's going on in the world as a result of the very rhetoric he's using. This is evil. This man is the true evil. Keep on stirring. Keep on stirring. Keep on stirring. Then it says they'll lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. I find it interesting that before he said lay your hands on the sick and they shall recover, he said you're going to cast out some devils. You know why? Because some sickness will never be healed because there's an evil spirit and an evil influence behind that sickness and that spirit of infirmity must be cast forth before they can be healed. Not in all cases, quotation to the news, but Look in any, so don't, so no Look more of this nonsense, but I just wish you would preach what Jesus preached. Oh, I am. Oh, okay. And this town is mad. What, what has he said about love? What has he said about unity, about charity, about taking care of widows and children? What has he said? And this town is mad? Oh, I, I love it. I, I feel like just leaving it on this. Because he looks a little cranked up there. Crazy. The town is mad because you're castigating and dehumanizing people of other faiths. You are persecuting people that believe different things in their religion than you. Mad about it. <laughs> Some of my buddies from school are mad about it. Yes, I'm going to preach like Jesus because Jesus, for more than anything else, cast out evil spirits. You're full of crap. So next week we get into Luke. And Luke oh has God. probably more than two weeks worth of text for oh, us to geez. get into. But tonight, we release some of you from some, from some bondage that you've allowed to creep into your homes. We've had stuff mailed in from all over America. You see, they are not mad because we're burning. They're mad at what we are burning. Now, I know there's good preachers in this town. I get it. They really are. But it's interesting. They're mad at what you're burning because you're burning the religious tools of people that are worshiping in their own way with their own beliefs. That's what people are mad at. It would be like me going and throwing one of your Bibles into the fire, which, by the way, someone did. Interesting that three times, two, two times a day, one time yesterday, people from other churches brought Masonic items for our church to burn because their church wouldn't dare broach that subject. You know, he's talking about the Masons who I believe are, are just a, a drinking club nowadays with their secret handshakes or whatever. But there, there are Christian, there are secret Christian organizations. One in Washington, D.C., what's it called, the Fellowship? That is, is actually active in Africa. Um, it has actually infiltrated our government uh, with this um, dominionist ideology. And dominionist ideology is not compatible with democracy. Um, and so he talks about the Masons, but the, the real organization, secret organization that has the power, he's silent on. 
says nothing about that's actually harming people and wants to replace our democracy with a theology where gay people get killed and women are uh, vessels for the progeny of men and no more. And people of color, they, they go back, you know, they're all neo-Confederates. They go back to enslavement. This is, this is what I believe Mr. Lockyer is hiding uh, by throwing the Masons out at everyone um, to deflect. So we got some secret supporters in town and we just let them keep being secret, hallelujah. But we got a whole lot more support than we do haters. Oh, I doubt that. I doubt that. So here's what we're going to do. Honey, I want you to come up here just for a second. I'm a, my wife's going to gonna pray just to, just to get us all settled down a little bit. If you brought the stuff, in, don't throw it in yet. I know it's a lot of stuff at the back. We'll get some this people to help. This is over. Father, we come into your throne room, God, and we enter into your gates with praise. Lord, because you Listen, are powerful. Woman. You are the holy. Women, sisters need to stick together. You stole the man from your best friend, your best friend. She trusted you. You betrayed her. And now you're going to stand up on the stage that she used to stand on and pray like you have some authority or some high ground to take. Bitch, please. You are the anointed. gave up the ghost and lord we thank you for the holy ghost okay now they're going out to to burn the books oh we got an ad coming up isn't that lovely timing if you want to eat healthy I'm sorry. feel your best you or, gotta try kachava great. i'm new at kachava this is the world's healthiest all in one i'm new at this looking forward to the burning of the books it's there's no sound on this apparently a satanist came up and threw a bible in the fire uh greg Locke said it didn't burn but um the satanist took a video of the bible going right in the fire and then he kissed his um his gay lover um and Locke is very anti-gay you'll notice that most people here are, they're just kind of looking on. Very few people are actually participating in this, maybe because they realize that um, you can burn a book, but you can't burn the idea contained within the book. You know, a Harry Potter book, it's fiction. You're upset at fiction. But, you know, this isn't the first time um, what, the, what this kind of activity does, as far as I'm concerned, it, it, it just kind of strengthens your resolve. If you're a part of the group that, um, that this hatred is, is being directed toward, I'm just concerned because some of his, uh, some of his parishioners have started threatening people in these small new age spiritual communities here in the Nashville and Western Kentucky area. And so I'm concerned for those people, the people that are afraid to stand up and go, you know, I practice the Wiccan religion and what you're doing is, uh, is wrong. And so I thought that I would make a video. I know it's been a little, um, it's been a little long. The next one I, I, I plan to make shorter. Uh, I actually have another one on my other channel I'm not good at this yet. Like I, I pre-recorded some clips and then I just kind of spoke over the clips that I had pre-recorded. But by the time I put it on YouTube, there was a little bit of a lag um, in what they were saying. And that lag wasn't there until I uploaded it to YouTube. So I'm not really sure what I'm doing. I just thought, 
you know, I've got something that I, I'm very familiar with these, with these spiritual communities in my area, and they do need, um, they do need someone to stand up and speak for them because literally if they try to speak up for themselves, these, these Southern Baptists in this area will go after them. Um, will talk about burning down their, you know, their little uh, crystal shops in, in the Nashville area or coming into their place of, of, of worship, um, you know, to see what's going on and um, to, uh, to talk about um, the fact that they, you know, they, they don't have any right to be anything other than Christian. And so I'm concerned for our spiritual communities. If you watch this, I thank you so much. I hope you learned a little bit about Pastor Greg Locke here and what he's doing. And I hope that um, if you have a platform or a voice, you can speak up um, against this hatred, this hate speech, this division. And, you know, this is, this is a publicity stunt. There goes a, there goes a chest into the fire. You can burn whatever you want. You can't burn people's beliefs away. You can't burn ideas. You can't burn people's imaginations. So I hope, um, again, I hope you found that helpful. I hope you have a lovely day. If no one has told you today that you matter, it's really important.